the allow cost and availability of the 50 cc's increased demand for such motorcycles after World War II. At the same time, people started racing them, and it did not take long for FIM, International Motorcycling Federation, to run the Coupe d'Europe, a European Cup as an international series for 50 cc's. A year later, FIM established a true Grand Prix 50 cc category, and the real racing began. Many of the local European manufacturers would take part, such as German Kreidler, Spanish Derby, Slovenian Tomas, and Italian Item, but it would also lure foreigners from the Far East. Japanese were also making a lot of small motorcycles, but with a such a small market, they had to boost exports to increase sales. In the 1950s and 1960s, brands like Honda and Suzuki were relatively unknown and they had to prove themselves. An effective way to show off is to win a few races, so they did their best. Both companies would choose different approaches, and while Honda went a four-stroke way with an RC110 four-valve single cylinder, Suzuki preferred simpler two-strokes. They applied their experience from building motorcycles and attempted to win the 1960 Isle of Man TT, but achieved a very little success with their three drivers, Toshio Matsumoto, Michio Ichino and Rei Fei. They struggled a lot, but hope appeared when a certain European, Ernst Degner, defected from East Germany. The company even helped him and convinced him to join the engine development team. Not only was he a good engineer, but he was also a successful rider too. As a former MZ employer, he applied acquired skills and knowledge to the new engine development and eventually even rode the Suzuki towards victory during the 1962 season. The bike, named the RM62, was an air-cooled single cylinder making 10 horsepower at 12,000 rpm. A good power but still weak stuff compared to what would come in the next years. During the following two seasons, Suzuki kept leading and winning the championships. The succeeding RM63 and RM64 were mostly just an evolution of the RM62, having up to 12.5 horsepower and 9 gears instead of 7. A watercooled twin cylinder was developed for the 1965 season, when Honda finally beat Suzuki with a 16 horsepower, 21,000 rpm RC115 model. A 16.5 horsepower Suzuki RK66 managed to bring home another victory in 1966, but then, for the next year, Honda withdrew and Suzuki had no real competition, taking the whole podium. However, yet in 1966, they were cooking a special engine as a prototype. In fear of Honda returning and aiming to steal another victory from them, the 1966 project was taken down off the shelf and reworked. The RP66 was made as a square three-cylinder engine, making 18 horsepower at 19,000 rpm, but its successor was a bit different. The layout was changed into a 90-degree V3 with a single standing and two laying cylinders. The rotary valve inlet was carried over from predecessors, and it was a water-cooled engine with a dry, multiplied clutch. Over time, Suzuki kept increasing the number of gears, and the RP68 received as many as 16 gears in the transmission. For a simple why question, there is a simple answer. Chasing the last possible horsepower out of these engines is at an expense of rideability. The RP68 cylinders were incredibly tiny at 28 by 26.5 mm, naturally having multiple crankshafts on ball bearings. The engine made of aluminum and magnesium had pressed in liners. There was a triplet of Mikoni VM20 carburetors, and the water pump was behind the standing cylinder and driven off the transmission with the oil pump. The final output 
was 19 horsepower, 20,000 RPM, an astonishing power per litre ratio of 380 horsepower, and comparable twin cylinders were not even close with their 16 to 17.5 horsepower. With such a tiny engine making this much power, means an amazingly narrow usable power range of 500 rpm so the rider had to change gears often not to end up in a dead rpm range sadly the engine was never placed into a frame and was never heard in public it was meant to run in 1968 but their regulations were changed by FIM at the last moment to allow only single cylinders and only six-spin transmissions. Although never actually racing, the Suzuki RP68 is considered the peak engineering of ultra-lightweight Grand Prix motorcycle racing. These machines had less than 60 kilograms of weight and were able to reach 200 km power. Achieving such a weight was a result of various solutions for instance, Honda's brakes were actually clamping onto the wheel itself. Please consider leaving a comment if you are enjoying engine stories like these. I have some ideas for the future of many kinds, but feel free to specify your suggestions down below. Positive feedback always drives me forward. Thank you.